All right, the AP poll has been released. I, for one, love the AP poll. Uh, I love it. I know some people say, why do they put out the preseason poll? Who cares? We haven't seen any team play. Those people don't have to do radio every day, Ted. Yeah, we need something. It's a it's a good way to look at the teams and get a get a list out there and see kind of what the the overall view of those those teams are. And you can either love it or hate it, but it's it's content, something to look at. Yeah. All right, let's run through it quickly. Georgia at number one, Michigan at two, Ohio State at three, Bama four, LSU five, USC six. Penn State 7, Florida State 8, Clemson 9, Washington 10. Texas is your first Big 12 team checking in at 11. Tennessee at 12, Notre Dame at 13, Utah at 14, Oregon at 15, Kansas State at 16, TCU at 17, Oregon State at 18, Wisconsin at 19. Finally, the Sooners checking in at number 20. The last five, UNC at 21, Ole Miss at 22, Texas A&M, despite having one of the most talented rosters in all of college football, checking in at 23, Tulane at 24, and the Iowa Hawkeyes checking in at 25. Let's start with Georgia. Number one, received 60 of 63 first place votes, which is a lot. Ted, I suppose that's what happens when you win back-to-back national championships and you've got an unbelievable amount of talent on your team. And they're worthy of it worthy of all those votes. I, for one, am trending a little bit away from Georgia to win it all this year, but them being ranked at number one, hey, they're the king. They've won it two years running. They've earned the number one spot. They've earned all those first place votes. When do you think the last time Alabama didn't receive a first place vote was? Oh, man. So I know because they're checking in at four, I know just because I've seen it from multiple places. It's the first time they've been out of the top three of the AP poll since 2009. It's probably so, since then. So yeah. Oh, eight. It's a long time. <laughs> I, I mean, it speaks, it really, almost. it really does speak to the, to what Saban's done there. Right. I know. It's incredible. I mean, he's been incredible, but it's, it's also crazy that you're preseason number four and everybody in the program is pissed off. Like it feels disrespected. Like that, mm-hmm. that's the level that he's gotten that program to. Like the consistency's just been insane. But the fact that they can be so angry about being preseason number four is pretty wild. Yeah. No, it is. Um I'm picking them to win the SEC, by the way. I'll take the Crimson Tide. I am too. I'm picking them to win it. Um, I think that it just feels weird with Georgia. And I don't, and I've said this before, like, I don't think they have a culture problem necessarily. I don't, it's just, they are on the wave of the guys that are starting to be there. Don't remember what it's like to not be good. Right. And, there's a there's just a human nature of entitlement that happens that that it's all just going to unfold for you. I happen to think that their easy schedule is a bad thing for them. I I I think that if if there was some more challenge on there that maybe you'd get a different response out of them. Maybe they show up and just absolutely wipe the floor with everyone. I mean, that's a very realistic possibility, but I don't know. It it seems at least from the outside, and I don't know anything about the inner workings of the program, that there's been some distraction gone that, that's happened over the last, you know, frankly, since since the national championship celebration. There's been, there's been a lot going on down there. We'll see how they respond to it. Yeah. And somehow, some way, maybe Kirby Smart will brainwash them into thinking they're only going to win five games again. That's still a, that's That's still one of the – most impressive accomplishments I've ever seen from a coach defending national chip. And somehow you have found a way to convince all your high four-star and five-star players that are going to be NFL draft picks that people think they stake. That's incredible brainwashing by Kirby smart a year ago. Just fantastic stuff. Well, Yeah. Going into the title game, 
was it who was it was it Stetson Bennett that was talking about how no one believed in him <laughs> wait a minute what <laughs> what are you talking about man <laughs> but hey it's like well not everyone okay yeah the seven people that didn't uh think but yeah that's that's where they're at right now though it's good yeah. how, how do you feel about OU at 20 seems about right yeah I think it's right I think I think you um I mean there's a certain part of the AP poll that is kind of what did you earn last year all right and i think i think this is this is fair i think there's uh it's not hard to find a scenario in which they finish at number 20 right but i think there's a really good chance that they're able to improve on that quite a bit and frankly i'd be disappointed if they didn't by the end but that's that's kind of what you've earned and i if I wasn't around the practices and, and stuff and seeing these guys and talking about it day in, day out, I don't think I'd know where to put Oklahoma either. And whenever you've got a team that's historically been really good and they're coming off of a losing year, just to kind of throw them at the 20 spot is typically what you get. That's like the, that's like the, we respect you, but we don't know where to put you spot. I think that's what you, what you should have, uh, should have anticipated coming in. Yeah. When when I look at the poll as a whole, uh, a couple teams stand out to me. The first one is Utah at fourteen, and, and I know that I know Cam Rising's knee and the latest update from Kyle Whittingham doesn't make it sound overly optimistic that it'll be ready to go for Florida. Right, they start the season with Florida and then they go to Baylor. That's a I mean, that's a tough start to the year for them, especially your quarterback coming off an ACL. But USC at six, Utah at 14. Once again, I cannot unsee what I saw at that Pac-12 championship game. Yeah, And I know Caleb Williams, right, was a little banged up. I get that. But the assault at the line of scrimmage that took place in that one, Utah's the back-to-back Pac-12 champs. And they've got two teams in their conference ranked ahead of them in the AP poll. Someone make that make sense to me. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I I think I think Oregon is Oregon's right there behind Utah at at uh, they're fourteen and fifteen. I think I think both of those teams are are better than USC. More consistent. I USC has the best player in college football in Caleb Williams, and he can do a lot with the ball in his hand. Um, you know, every single snap. But you, it's just so hard to live like that. And their last six games of the season, it is a brutal, brutal schedule. They didn't yeah, have yeah. a schedule that was even close to that last year. I mean, and you know, we talked about this. I think there's a, a pretty decent chance that the Pac-12 maybe chews each other up throughout that last six weeks. But it's going to be fun to watch and, uh, and to see it play out. Yeah, USC – now, Caleb Williams is incredible, right? I mean, he is. But their bye is September 16th. And then they play nine in a row. Their last six at Notre Dame against Utah, at Cal, who will be coming off a bye, Washington at Oregon, and then UCLA. And that is that remember they they did not play Oregon a year ago. No. All right. So when you're talking about they didn't the, play Washington either. When when you talk about the the physical teams in that league, right? At the line of scrimmage, you know, Washington's certainly up there, but Oregon, right, with the what Cristobal left there and now what Lanning has brought in, right? And then we all saw what Utah can do to USC a year ago. I just, I don't see it. I know they're going to be good on offense. There's no doubt in my mind they'll be good on offense. But, and, and maybe I am, maybe it is my OU homerism that isn't allowing me to see the potential in the Trojans. But I just, the sixth best team in the country, I just, I'm going to have to see some significant improvement defensively before I, I get on board with them being the highest ranked Pac-12 team. Yeah. 
Um, I mean, there's some unknown for sure with Kansas State, but I if if, if Kansas I mean, State really what what's the unknown? Really, Deuce Vaughn clearly they they don't have, and I've talked to Chris Kleiman about this at Big Twelve Media Day. They don't have another Deuce Vaughn, right? Those guys. I mean, who? Someone tell me who has a Deuce Vaughn in college football right now, right? No, You're seeing these clips of him at Cowboys training camp. He just disappears and then appears. <laughs> You're just like, wait, what? It's an illusion. No, but they feel really good about Treshawn Ward, who transferred in at running back. They feel really good about DJ Giddens, who had a significant role for him at running back a year ago. Will Howard, just talking to him, you know, multiple times during the spring, that guy's confidence has grown tenfold. They were able to retain Colin Klein. Most importantly, like they got they got four starting offensive linemen back. Yeah. That's I, I would take them right now. They're ranked 16. I would take them neutral site head to head against USC. I'd take them neutral site head to head against Florida State. I'd take them neutral site head to head against Washington, against Texas. Um, it starts to get a little bit different with Notre Dame, Utah, and Oregon because stylistically that's like way closer to kind of where they are, you know, but just right. with the way that they play, like those teams, I, I think that they would probably beat all of those teams in front of them. Yeah, I, I've got them one in the Big 12. I, I just think I believe in what Kleiman does, and I, I think they got a ton back. They've been really good defensively, or – really solid defensively ever they since got, they switched if, to the they three, find three, a five. pass rusher if, if they can find someone that can get get to the quarterback with some some level of consistency they're going to be a really difficult team to to get past and yeah. if they stay healthy, i mean just like everyone else you know i say stay healthy because i have a feeling will howard is going to be the guy that does absolutely everything in that offense it's going to be colin klein all over again you know, don't, run about. Don't say that. Thirty quarterback sweeps and quarterback powers a game. Oh no, oh no, <laughs> oh no. Well, at least the sitters don't play it now. Any any other other team where they're at in this poll that really stands out to you? Um, you know, there's a lot of them that I think are just kind of take it or leave it. Um, I think, I think Texas being where they are obviously you know we've talked about that a lot it's I, I think it's too high for them but you know whatever not too upset about it i'm interested about clemson you know i i expect them to be good on defense again and i i feel like there's there's a lot of folks that that the answer is big garrett riley going there on as the offensive coordinator and maybe that's the case we just have such a small sample size with him. And I, I'm i not sold. On, like, there's a lot of people that are sold on Klubnik at quarterback. And I'm sure he's going to help him out a lot. But like, you go back and look at like, his statistics are not very good. Like, no. That, no. Not good enough to make you think, like, okay, here we go. Now we've got things. I think there's still a bit of a question there. So, I don't know. Yeah, I am. I'm very interested to watch them offensively. I, I'm with you. I think the the amount of talent they've got on defense, that defense is going to be good, right? I mean, there's just there's just no doubt. But who are who are Klubnik's main targets going to be? Like, I feel like that program had such an awesome run at wide receiver, and now it's a bit of a who like do do they have any dudes? Well, uh, wide receiver good and players, yeah, I mean, from, they quite they, the run at quarterback. <laughs> like they essentially went from Deshaun Watson to Trevor Lawrence. I mean, I know there was a little bit of a, a little a Kelly hiccup, Bryant stint in there, a little hiccup in there in between. But like, that was a long duration of having elite quarterback play, and like, there's a little bit of of the Georgia aspect to that for me as well. Like. Georgia's defense is clearly elite. 
they found a run at quarterback with Stetson Bennett. Is it going to be that easy to replace? Like, and, and maybe, like, maybe the roster is just at that spot to where next guy's going to be able to step in. But I, that's the thing that has me concerned. And it's kind of still the same thing with Clemson. Yeah. One that I don't know for whatever reason, I am, I am not as high on Tennessee as a lot of people are. And you know, I love our guy, Josh Heupel. Right. But they got to replace some playmakers offensively. Mm hmm. Right. And that defense was just way too up and down for my liking. Like they're going to have to show me some improvement on the defensive side of the ball, but, and, and they deserve to be at 12 where they're at coming off the season, right. That they had, but I'm a little skeptical of Joe Milton. Right. I, I just am. And I know he's, he's massive and he's got a huge arm and everyone's saying, well, you pair that huge arm with how they want to push it down the field and Hypel's offense, right? At, I get it. But I'm just going to need to see it a little bit. And you got to remember, man, they they play, and people out there that subscribe to uh, Bud Elliott's blue chip ratio, right? They play Bama, A&M, and Georgia. That's three of the most four talented teams in college football. They also, they got to go to Florida early in the year. I just, I don't know, man. Like it, I think the ceiling for them is maybe a nine-win football team. Now, I could end up being completely wrong. Right? Maybe they're challenging for an SEC championship. But I don't know. It's just, I, I don't think they're quite where the elite of the elite in that conference are at. Right? And really, who else in college football is? Maybe, maybe you could talk about Ohio State, but I, I just don't know. I just... I feel like some people have really, really high expectations for Tennessee. And if they're an eight and four, nine and three football team, I would, I'd view that as a really good year for them. Yeah. Well, the big wild card there is, is Milton, right? And oh my God, did he look good in the orange bowl against Clemson? I mean, he, he was fantastic, but you know, he was, he, he's, he's, Throwing to playmakers that that aren't going to be around, so I think that's a that's a, a big point. And um, a month to prepare for a football game is, you know, that's that's maybe a little bit different. There, he's the wild card. If you get Orange Bowl Joe Milton, then they're going to have a lot of success. If you don't get Orange Bowl Joe, uh, Orange Bowl Joe Milton, I mean, college football to have a player like. Hendon Hooker, a six-year senior that had as much experience as he did, I and it was as good in the running game and efficient in the passing game. I mean, it was it's just incredible, like a seventy-five percent completion guy, you know, and was really effective in the running game. I that you don't just like replace that experience and that efficiency just snapping your fingers. So I'm with you. I mean. I will say this, like I'm, I'm maybe as excited or more to watch Joe Milton this year to see what happens than any quarterback prospect that I've seen in a while. Yeah. It, he's just, he is the, he's the lab quarterback, right? I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. We'll, we'll see what it looks like. Tough schedule for Tennessee. I, I'm still trying to figure out what I think about Florida state. They, they got a ton of experience back on the ball. Like a lot of people are picking them to win the ACC and go to the playoff. I Am I being too heavily influenced from watching an OU team that had a lot of its best players not playing, play them to the wire in the bowl game? How you think, could you? No, you're not too much. In, how? That's, that's our last picture of them where they had all of their guys back to prove a big point right in front of a a home crowd all things in their favor playing against third string tackles and no i i think we played this version of florida state at their best with everything in their favor and it took a walk off field goal to beat a 6 and 6 football team yeah so like they're either 
way overrated or we are way underrated. And I think I'll, at least right now, I'll say that they're way overrated. Yeah. I just, you know, just so much hype around them. And I, on paper, I'll, they look incredible. Yeah. And I was not blown away by Jordan Travis. Yeah. But he, we contained him really well in that yeah, game. Yeah. And that's just, I, I'm interested to see how it goes. And it's been a long time. You know, you go to Florida state, like there's a ton of tradition. There's a, there's high expectations, right? It's like the players know what they're signing up for, but when's the last time they've had these type of expectations for that program? I, don't I mean, know. how, how do they handle that? How does Mike Norvell handle it? How do the players handle it? Like, do they handle it? Well, does it go to their head? Like that's what, that's what I'm interested in. Uh, hey, if I was coaching that football team, let's not make it more difficult than it is. Here, Jordan, I want you to watch this 2012 season of Johnny Manziel throwing it up to Mike Evans. All right, you've got a six foot seven wide receiver that can absolutely fly and jump. Just throw it in his area. Like, that's, you know what I'm saying? Like, to me, don't make it more uh, complicated than it needs to be. Let that guy go make some plays. Yeah. Now, looking at the breakdown of the AP Top 25, you've got six SEC teams in there, five Big Ten, five Pac-12, four Big 12. You got three from the ACC. But this is just, this speaks to kind of where the sport's headed, right? And where, really, where OU is headed. When you think about this AP top 25 and apply it to what the conferences are going to look like next year, 16 of the 25 will be in the SEC in the Big Ten next mm. year. It's crazy. You you talk about the consolidation of the big-time programs, right, that year in and year out have extremely high expectations, like super conferences, whatever you want to call it. It's crazy to think that next year 16 of the and it's eight and eight right it's eight big 10 eight sec right that is i don't know i just saw that on on paper i was like wow that's crazy i mean kind of in a weird way it's 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 almost like it's 16 of 24 because notre dame's independent right yeah and and not in a conference you know i guess that's one way to look at it and, but and that makes it divisible right yeah there you go I 16 of 24 is that three or what four out of six you reduce yep. the fraction to two out of three two and thirds hey, but if you're oregon state you got to be happy because you're looking at a you're looking at a playoff appearance baby highest ranked non-power five let's go <laughs> <laughs> i i wonder how many people and i i would assume people that voted for the ap top 25 know oregon state won 10 games last season i know that hey that's why I think it's so funny that the Pac-12 dissolved right before the best season they've had in 25 years. Yeah, it it really is. <laughs> it's insane. Now, the one team in the AP Top 25 where I look at them and I go, oh, man, I just, I don't know, but it could be real good. Wisconsin Badgers. Yeah. Remember they're on the they're on the soft side of the Big Ten, mm -hmm. right? Luke Fickle, I think you and I both big believers in how he goes about uh running a program. Gonna open things up offensively under Phil Longo. You got Mordecai up there. You got that you got an eighth freak. year quarterback. Yeah, you got an eighth year quarterback. You've got one of the freakiest dudes in college football at running back mm -hmm. and Allen you know they're going to be good on defense. Like, that's what they do. They play Offensive great defense. lines should be strong. Don't know anything I, about them, but I'm sure there's there's some beer drinkers with their shirts tied in a knot doing some double dutch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you, don't, if you don't get that reference, go back a couple episodes uh, where we talk about – where I talk about my uh, trip to Joe Thomas's Hall of Fame induction in Canton. You'll, you'll enjoy that. But, yeah, I – Wisconsin, like getting to the Big Twelve or Big Twelve, Big Ten championship game. I, I don't know. It feels, 
there's just a lot of positive news coming out of Madison. Like people feeling really good about where that football team's at right now. So that's one where it's like, oh, they're all the way at 19. They could be, when you talk about, okay, this preseason poll and where they end up at the end of the season, like they could be a big climber. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to really know what to expect from them. It's going to be different, but uh, you look at the rest of that division, where, where else are you going to go? Right. I just, I, th I think it's, I think a lot of people are just excited to see what it's going to look like, especially yeah. offensively. I hope they keep some semblance of their power run game, which you think they would considering like they may fully make the, the transition at some point, but not whenever you have a running back like Braylon Allen. Yeah. That dude is a monster.